Hey, what's going on? In this video, we're going to look at color grading your DJI Mavic footage, and we're going to compare two color profiles, DCINE-like and D-Log, and see which is easiest to color grade and which has the best results. To do that, I'm using Final Cut Pro. So we've got two sets of footage here. First of all, we have a shot using the DCINE-like color profile, and it's already looking pretty good. Compare that to the D-Log profile. You can see that the D-Log profile looks a bit more washed out. The colors are a bit flatter. Here's the D-Cine-like and here's the D-Log. Now to do some color grading, we are going to use some scopes that we have available up here. And particular, in particular, we're gonna use two, the RGB Overlay and the RGB Parade. Now just looking at the RGB Overlay, we can see a big difference in the D-Cine-like and the D-Log. You see here that the DCINE like has a much broader range of colors. Uh, the way this works is 100 represents white in the highlights and zero represents black in the shadows. And you can see that the image ranges from almost up all the way to 100 down to about 25 in the shadows. If we compare that to the D log footage, you'll see that these are much closer together. We get nowhere near 100. Um, up there in the highlights. So everything's clustered much closer together. And that's because D-Log is supposed to capture as much information as possible and make sure that we don't have a situation of blown out whites or anything too low in the blacks. So we always have that color available, we just need to pull it out. So let's do that, let's pull out that color. So first of all, we'll take the d like footage and we're going to color grade it. To do that, we're going to adjust just two things, exposure, and saturation. So with exposure we're going to adjust the highlights and you see as I raise the highlights here the RGB overlay raises with it. So we want to make sure that we don't blow out our highlights but we'll get it up to almost a hundred because we do have several white things in this picture. We're going to lower the midtones just a little bit to add a bit more contrast and then we're going to lower the shadows as well not quite down to zero, because we don't really have any true back blacks in this image, but we're just gonna lower it a little bit. Now let's look at what we've done compared to what the decine like footage was before we did any adjustments. So this is with the color correction on, and this is with it off. Big difference, I think we've really improved things there. Okay, so let's do the same exercise again with the D-Log footage and see what we get. So we are going to broaden here this to bring out more of the highlights and create more contrast. So once again, we're gonna raise up the highlights a little bit, in this case, quite a bit more. We're going to lower the midtones to give us a little bit more contrast, and we are going to lower the shadows as well. Not quite down to zero, but a little bit closer. And again, if we compare what we've done to what was previously there, this is with color correction on, and off, you see that we've again improved the image quite a lot. But which is better, DCINE-like or D-Log? Well, let's compare the two side by side. And just visually, you can see that DCINE-like and D-Log do look pretty different still. DCINE-like has a broader range of colors. And we can see that by looking at the RGB parade. So you can see the values for red, green, and blue here. And watch how they change when we go over to D-Log and much more compact. So, so far, I think the DCINE-like footage looks quite a bit better than the D-Log. Now we can do some things to work on that. And one thing we can do is we can increase the saturation. So we're gonna take the global pack and bump up the saturation here. And this will already make the colors pop a little bit more. You can see in the RGB parade as we go up and down, this does adjust how the red, green, and blue look. So we're gonna put up quite a little bit here of saturation, about 40%. Now if we compare, I think we're getting a little bit closer to the DCINE-like profile. But to be completely fair, we are also going to adjust the saturation in the DCINE-like as well, uh, maybe about 20% or so. So with the color grading done, let's compare the final output. So this is DCINE-like and this is D-Log. And I think if you look at items like the trees in the background and 
the shadows moving over the trees, I really do prefer the DCINE-like look from the D-Log look. Now all that information that we want to pull out is in D-Log, so we could do things such as adjusting the color of the color board here as well, but this gets much more tricky. We can take things like the highlights and turn them to be a bit more yellow or green and so forth. But really now this is a lot more work <laughs> required to try and get the right color profile. So just if you only want to use exposure and saturation, then I would say so far, decine like is a little bit easier to use than D-Log. But before we conclude that we should use decine like for everything, just because it makes color grading easier, I want to show you a second example. Here we've got some more footage. This was shot just before sunset, and we have the footage in decine-like color profile and D-Log. Now there's a pretty big difference between the two here. First of all, look at the RGB overlay for decine-like. We have got a situation where we've really blown out some information here, and that is present in the sky. If you look at the sky here, we just basically have white and yellow in the sky and absolutely no definition. There were actually some clouds up here, but you can't see them. In the D-Log footage, we actually do have that information still present. We've got the clouds here, you can see them, and that is shown in the RGB overlay, which shows that we've kept all this information. We haven't blown out any of the highlights. So let's do a quick bit of color grading, again, adjusting the exposure and the saturation on these two images. First of all, the decine like we're going to raise the highlights just a little bit, uh, bring down the midtones, and then lower the shadows and just bump up the saturation a little bit. Now if we compare that, what we've done to turning it off, again a nice improvement I think. But we have not reclaimed any of the detail in the sky, it's still blown out. Over with D-Log, let's do the same here. We're going to increase, let's go to exposure first. We're gonna increase the highlights just a little bit, bring down the midtones a touch, and bring down the highlights a touch as well, and then bump up the saturation. And now look at that sky now. We've got this beautiful orange and yellow. We can see where the sun is. We can see these clouds. Just take a look at the sky as we take the color correction off and back on again. We've really brought out some colors in the sky there. It looks fantastic. Also in the ocean there as well. You can see the difference. So now when we compare the two, decine like it looks good overall with the colors, but we've completely lost the sky and we've really lost a lot of the ocean in the background here as well. And then compare that to the beautiful colors we see with D-Log. In this case, D-Log, by giving us a flatter image, has really helped us maintain color and maintain detail in the picture that we've been able to pull out in color grading. So overall, my experience has been that in general, I like to shoot in D-Cine-like. It makes color grading fairly straightforward. But in certain situations, I think D-Log is very, very useful. And in situations like the one we have here with the sunset, the D-Log footage just retains so much more detail and it looks a lot better. But for me, 90% of the time I'll use Cine-like. And if there's something particular going on, like a sunset, a sunrise and so forth, um, you always have the option of using D-Log to maintain as much information in, in the footage as you can. If you have your own thoughts about this, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you think. And for more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Catch you on the next one.